G'day folks, I've just been driving through Riverina, New South Wales looking for somewhere to put a yabby net and I've come across this likely looking spot. Hey you! You're watching Robbie Cooking! Now I'm going to be using these open top lift nets. I've got four of these with bait bombs in them and they're baited up with bits and pieces of yellow belly, yellow belly offcuts. I've just got to hope that it's deep enough. It doesn't look overly deep. I reckon that'll be deep enough. Net number two. Net number three. Number four. Now all four nets are in. I don't know anything about this spot. I'll probably give them 20 minutes or so before I check them the first time. But if I look over here, look at all these holes in the ground. I suspect that they're old yabby holes, even right up the bank up here. And down here, right along the high water mark, there's lots of holes. I reckon this might have filled up last year or the year before when we had those two really wet years and it's had water and there's been yabbies in here. And now the water's gone right down, it's become quite dirty because it's, uh, it's more concentrated. There could be carp in here or yabbies stirring the water up and making it dirty, I really don't know. But it looks like a bloody good yabbying spot. Let's hope that it is. There's a darter under the water there looking for fish. He's gone down there. I can see his bow waves. He just came out next to that fence. That's a cormorant. If he's here, that's probably a sign that there's going to be fish here. There's an old bridge there that looks like it's been collapsed for many years. But I've just come for a walk along the creek a little bit to see what I can find. And it opens right up down here and looks quite a bit deeper. So if I'm not doing much good up where I am, I might be able to move my nets down here and try. There's a carp scale. So if I catch a few yabbies in the first couple of checks, I might even throw a line in for a while as well. See how I go. Right, it's been about 20 minutes in this good looking creek. Yes, there's something in here. I saw them. Yes, there's yabbies here. You beauty. I didn't bring my bucket. That's all. Oh, I did. It's in the car, but I didn't bring it with me now. That's okay. I've got a little one. It can go back and I've got a keeper. I've got a bloody keeper. All right. <laughs> oh, he nearly got me then. It's only been 20 minutes. This is the impatient check. That's a great sign. Little yabby, you can go back. Bigger yabby, you can come with me. I've got something special for you. We're having yabbies for lunch. <laughs> I'll leave him there. I'll quickly put the net back in. Then I'll go and put some water in my bucket before I check the other nets. Now that's not the biggest yabby I've ever caught, but it's uh, certainly big enough to go in the pot. A little bit more water than that, I reckon. All right, off to a great start. Net number two. These big ones. Oh, yes. It's hard when they're so far out. I've nearly got to tip them out. When I say big ones, they're not overly big, but they're big enough. I'll, uh, I'll keep that one. This one here I'll throw back. I reckon I can do better. Oh, there's a hole in the bottom of that net. That's not cool. How'd you get, mate? There's a hole in the bottom of this net. I'll need to tie something in there to try and patch that up. Well, I've caught four, kept three. There's some in there. Look at that. Yeah, that's better. Nice ones. Sorry, caught four, kept two, I meant to say. Now it's caught six, kept four, because I'm keeping both of these. No eggs. Oh, yeah, it's a nice yabby. Yeah, that's what I came for. Beautiful. Still not a record-breaking yabby, but he's a nice yabby. Awesome. I'm getting a few, that's good. I've certainly caught bigger out here in the Riverina, but oh, look at this, a few in this one. There's a heap in this one. There's four. 
Oh, two of them I'm going to keep, and, and a shrimp, four yabbies and a shrimp. It's a nice big one, he can go in the pot. He can go in the pot. Put these other two back, I can do better than that. Oh, he nearly got me too. And a great big freshwater shrimp. Unlike my last Yabby Catch and Cook where I cooked the shrimp, I don't have to worry about cooking the shrimp this time. So I'm getting a few yabbies, and that's good. Two, four, six, ten. What is called ten yabbies in the uh, twenty-minute impatient check? I reckon this spot looked like a good spot to go yabbing, and it looks like I was right. I might pull this one out and repair it. This is the one with the hole and I might repair it, then move it down there where it might be a bit deeper, see how that goes. Well now this net's seen a few adventures, you can see some repair work here. And now I've just done a bit of a quick patch up under here to try and fix up that little hole. And I've moved it down to this other end where it opens up and looks a bit deeper. See how it goes here. It's very, very windy today. Now in between checking my yabby nets I've decided to open the October Cod Box from tackleclub.com.au Now, we know the cod season is closed in October, but it's not closed everywhere. There are a number of lakes in both Victoria, Victoria and New South Wales that remain open all year round. And I've got a funny feeling both South Australia and Queensland you can cod fish all year round as well. But just check up on that before you go out in case I'm wrong. So there are still fishing op options available, and of course you can stock up on lures during the closed season if you want to. Right, the October Cod Box by tackleclub.com.au. It's only got three lures, but they're all hard bodies and they're all big ones. We have the Shimano Triple Impact. I've caught cod on one of these before. I got one of these in a uh, tackle club box a few years ago. It's like a little wake bait with a propeller at the back that splatters a bit of water brrr, across the surface and attracts the fish. And they do work because I've caught cod on them. So the Shimano Triple Impact. We've got a, a Panacea Shad Marauder. A Panacea Marauder. These are made by Pontoon 21 Lures. That's a great big crankbait or a big deep diving lure. And we have... The Sixth Sense Cloud 9, which is a really fat, chubby, square build crankbait. The Americans call them a crankbait. We usually call them a diving hard body lure or something. If they're the three lures that are in the box. There's only three. That's probably because they're top shelf lures and they're worth a bit of money. There's also King of the Fish sticker. There is a, a bit of a flyer in here explaining that. Christmas is coming. Beat the rush and order early. You can get a one-off box. You can get three, six and twelve month subscriptions available. Now, they gift a wee gift wrap as well. Now, if you use my discount code Robbie10, you'll save 10% off the one-off box. Or Robbie10S if you decide to take out a subscription. Let's have a look and see. Let's have a look at the breakdown. Right, the October Cod Box. The Panacea Marauder is $24.99. The Cloud9 Magnum Square Bill, $29.99. The Shimano Triple Impact is $46.99. Total, total, it's biting me, sorry, got an ant on my leg. That's a total of $101.97. But if you'd taken out a subscription, if you'd already subscribed, you would have got this for $69.99. All this for just $2.30 a day. Remember, that's if you had a subscription, or if you bought a once-off box, the next box isn't going to be like this. Every month is different. The next one might have four or five lures. It might have smaller lures or more soft plastics. Tackle Club is like a lucky dip, so you never know what you're going to get from one month to the next. So basically, if you'd bought a once-off purchase or you've been subscribed, this would have cost you 70 bucks, and you would have got 100 bucks worth of lures. Anyway, cod season is coming. I'm excited. I'm going to keep these in the shed and hopefully give them a swim when the season opens. I haven't caught cod on those two, but I have caught cod on one of these in the past. That's a bloody ripper. Right, it's time to go around the nets again. Nothing in this one this time. A big shrimp. One big shrimp and one little yabby. I might move this to a different spot. Great fishing bait, the old shrimp. Oh, the yabby fell through the mesh. He's making his way back in there. 
See you later, mate. I'm going to move this net. Right, net number two. Yes, I can see some claws in there. Oh, one got through. One was only a little one. The little one got through, but I've got one keeper. No, oh, it's got no eggs. I might just dip him straight in the bucket. I'll leave this one where it is. Right, net number three. Oh, there's a big black one took off there then. There's a little bait sized yabby and a shrimp in the net and that's it. Down the bottom here. There was a large one, I think he might have even been under the net. Oh bugger. Oh well, better luck next time. I don't know whether this will be a good idea or not. I'm suspecting it's going to be snaggy, but I'm just going to lower this down under, just down next to that tree there. This is the one that I moved last time. Oh, nothing at all. This is the net that I repaired earlier. I'm actually moving it back to the spot where I had it the first time around because I've done it right here. Now I'm going to cook more yabbies on the bank of the creek here. I might do it behind this big old tree. So I can try and get out of the wind a little bit. I'll use this tree as a wind break. So I'm just going to set everything up now. Right, I'm just setting up here. You can see the first thing that I've done was I cleared as many dry leaves as I could from around the area just to prevent any sort of fire danger. I've also just scratched the dirt a little bit with my foot to create a flat spot. And then I've put my orange tackle box there. I'm going to set my little gas stove up on top of the tackle box just so that it's up a little bit higher and not right down at ground level. And then I'm going to cook my yabbies on the bank of the creek. Now I haven't got bacon. It's not going to be bacon sandwich and yabbies because I uh, because I haven't got... I actually never take bacon with me. I just happened to have some last time. <laughs> I've actually got a salad roll with me. I bought it in the uh, in the service station at Geraldery earlier. Salad roll and yabbies for lunch. My little Ferno stove that I bought recently comes with this device. This is designed so that you can put a bit of stability to your cooking. You fold those legs out. And then you just clip the gas bottle onto there somehow. There we go. Perfect. Now I've got a stable spot to cook. Now that water looks to be pretty stable there, so it must be reasonably flat. I haven't worked out exactly how I'm going to cook these yabbies yet. I'm thinking what I might do, I'll put a bit of water up there because I'm going to boil the tail, the yar claws, but the tails, I might do similar to last week, but instead of breadcrumbs, I might dip them in a bit of oil. I might even just put a bit of black pepper, on, cracked pepper on them. Pepper yabbies, I've got some herb, herb and garlic crumbs. I've got some spices down here somewhere. What's this green stuff? Parsley, parsley yabbies, mixed herbs, mixed herb yabbies. Actually, I might do that. Bit of mixed, bit of mixed herb and black pepper. Pepper yabbies. I can't remember whether there's six or seven in here. Anyway, this is the last time I check them. I'm taking them out now, so hopefully I catch a few to add to my lunch. I'll check this one last because I put that in last. That's the one I moved. I'll check the first one last. <laughs> I went to the party tomorrow and I took a front seat at the back. Doesn't make sense, does it? All right. Come on, yabbies. Yes. Oh, there's a big one. Oh, they're both on the outside. There was two big ones there and they were both on the outside of the net. Oh, see you later, mate. Little weenie bait one. They must have just been sitting up here about to get in the net. Oh, I'm totally devastated. Will I give them, will I give them another 10? I might just give them 10 more minutes. I'll give them a chance to find their way back in. Unless there's heaps in the other net. There's two big ones and they're all on the outside of the net just making their way in. That's not cool. Yes. Two. Two good ones. 
I'll check them for eggs. That one hasn't got any. What about this black one? No, no eggs on either. Beauty, two nice ones. And I'm going to leave them in one more time. I was going to make that me last check, but I'm going to just give them another short soak. Give them another 10 or 15 minutes. This is the one that I moved last time. It was a shrimp. A shrimp, but no yabbies. Hmm. Might move that out into the open. What do I feel like I've only checked three nets? Oh, I've got one. Oh, I didn't check the first one. Dirt. I'm going to move this one to way up here where I started. Ugh. And this is the first net that I'm checking last. It's way out. I don't think there's anything in it. No, that's a shame. Not very deep. No, I'll give them one more go. I better try and get a thumbnail video before I start preparing any of these yabbies. Now I'm going to prepare my yabbies while I wait for the, uh, the nets for the last check. Mother Nature has kindly put a chopping board here for me and I've already killed a couple of yabbies. I'm just using this spot here to euthanize the yabbies so that I can get them ready to cook. But you're not going to see me do this, but you'll get the idea of what's about to happen. Now I grab my dead yabby, I place my thumb under his tail, I twist and pull the tail off. Tail goes on the plate, I pull the claws off. Got to be careful because I can still actually have a bit of force on their claws if you're not careful. And then with the shells, straight in the creek for the other yabbies to eat. Now what I'm going to do is show you how to de-vein that black line, now that's the poo line, we call it de-veining, you fan the fins out at the back like that, you grab the middle one, you can see the little circle there where the poopy hole is, twist that and that'll pull straight out and just throw it away. Do the same thing with this one, grab it, twist the middle, pull the pipe out and away you go. Now I'm going to shell the yabby and I do that exactly the same as the way I do it when they're cooked Just break the side off and pull the shell off But just be aware that green yabbies or uncooked yabbies are harder to shell than cooked yabbies There is a way around this If you want to, you can boil the yabby for 30 seconds first Just to firm up the flesh a little bit and that will make it easier to shell I'm not going to worry about that, I'm just going to peel them green but it is harder to peel a, uh, an uncooked yabby than it is to peel a cooked yabby. And there is my first yabby tail. I'll wash these obviously before I cook them. What I'm going to do, I'm going to shell all these tails now. And then I'm going to put them in my esky on ice while I wait for the nets for their last soak. Right now, there's my claws, there's my shelled tails. I'm going to go and put them on some ice now. Well, I'll just give these nets an extra 10 or 15 minutes and then I'm going to start cooking. All right, the nets have had about 20 minutes. That'll do. This is their final check, so I'll check that one last because that's the one I put in last. And I'll start here. Nothing in that one. Now this net is the reason that I decided to give him one more soak because there's two big dark yabbies on the outside of the net. He's inside the net this time. One of them is anyway. Beauty. I've got one more. I think that'll mean I've got ten. Turn around, blue claws. Oh, no eggs. Let's tip that upside down. You fall in the bucket. It's had a little yabby and a big shrimp in it before. This time it's got... It's got a keeper yabby. I'm going to keep him. He's not huge, but he'll... Uh, a bit of meat on his tail. He'll do. Come on, mate. Into the bucket. All right, now for the last net. And I think it's empty. It is empty. Oh, well. I've got two in the last round. I can't complain. Right, I've got two more. I'll prepare them now, then I'll start cooking. Now the first thing I want to do is put a bit of oil on here. That's the oil that I'm going to just roll the yabbies around in so that I can put a bit of pepper on them. Then I'm going to put a bit in over here as well. 
Now, it doesn't matter if it goes to one side. In fact, that'd be beneficial because then it'll make it easier for me to cook them in one spot. Right, I'm rolling the yabby tails around in the oil now, just to uh, just to make them all sticky. Now I'll get a bit of cracked pepper. I'll put a bit of cracked pepper on them. I'll put a fair bit on. Now I'll continue to roll it around in the uh, in the oil and pepper combination. Right, they're looking good. Let's light the stove. Right, they're burning, we've got the invisible flame. Here she goes. Very windy. Right, let's throw the yabbies into the hot oil. This could sizzle and hiss a little bit, so just stand back. It's not too bad at all. Pepper yabbies are underway. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to throw these yabby tails, these yabby claws, into the water that I'm going to cook them in so that I can watch this plate and have something to put my yabbies on because they're cooking very quick. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to put my claws on and take my tails off. Here we go, peppered yabby tails and claws. Embarrassingly, I dropped two tails into the dirt and had to throw them out and I'm really, really annoyed with myself. I tipped one out of the frying pan and I was turning them over with my uh, little lifter and I just knocked one off the plate while I was just using a paper towel to soak up some of the oil. But anyway, let's eat these and see how they go. Right, firstly, peppered yabby tails. Oh, they are very nice. Yes, huge, huge success. That is actually quite a bit nicer than last time when I cooked them in the breadcrumbs, the same way but in breadcrumbs. I think I prefer them this way, just plain, but with a bit of pepper. Well, the tails were absolutely beautiful. I was very impressed. Now it's time for the claws. Now, if you've never eaten a yabby claw, this is how you do it. You get the claw, you open it, you get the moving bit, pull it back towards you. Sometimes it'll come out with meat, sometimes it'll just be the fin. And you can just suck that bit of meat off there. If you want, then you throw that in the water. Then you can use a pair of pliers or some kind of uh, nut crackers or your teeth if you're bad like me and break into that. And then there's the meat. You suck that bit out. And there is your tail meat, your claw meat. And that claw meat, that is the nicest part of the yabby. Absolutely beautiful. Straight down the hatch. Yummo. I'm going to eat the rest of these right now. Well, folks, the peppered yabby tails were a huge hit. I preferred them over the way I'd done them last time in the breadcrumbs. The breadcrumbs were very nice, but I think I liked it this way better. Peppered yabby tails, fry the tails with a bit of pepper, boil the claws, and you've got a magnificent meal. Thank you all very much for watching.